Welcome to Inside the Honors College, where we believe that wisdom and virtue is found when we learn together. Join us as we take an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. I'm Taina Esteves. And I'm Abby DeVos. And this is our second episode in a series where we are visiting offices around campus that are focused on well-being. So whether that be spiritual well-being, emotional well-being, physical well-being, whatever it looks like for anyone, any student on campus, but specifically as honors students to provide our community with resources around campus to just focus on our well-being together. Today we are visiting the SCRD and looking into what resources they have to offer on campus. Kind of in line with the thing that you were just saying, Abs, they were really highlighting the office's like use of student belonging, you know, like mm-hmm. making sure that students, regardless of the student race, ethnicity, background, socioeconomic background, mm-hmm. all of that, just being a place, an office uh, where they can come and be themselves, not have to put on a facade, not have to try and explain your language, your food, your whatever that be for you. Uh, so I, I absolutely loved getting to speak to them. Their office was so homey. There's mm. great colors. There's couches. I mentioned that in the interview as well. We've got some great art. So lots to look forward to there as well. Yeah, I'm very excited for you guys to hear this episode and just see how present the SCRD is on campus and how tragic it would be if you guys went four years missing what they're doing. They have so many opportunities to get involved and to just celebrate what they're doing. And as Ty, you just said, like the idea of creating a space where you guys can just be your authentic selves. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Well, good afternoon, you two. Thank you so much for being here. How are we doing today? Good. Yeah, I'm doing really good, well. Good. Yeah. yeah. So this is honestly a very exciting part of my day. That's great. Um, the SDRD office is one of my favorite parts of APU campus. So thank you so much for taking the time uh, yeah. to be here with me. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Great. So going into it, could we start off with some introductions? Matoni, you want to start off? Yes. So my name is Matoni Ngabire. I am the new SCRD program coordinator. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what SCRD means, it is the <laughs> Student Center for Reconciliation and Diversity. Beautiful. All right. And, well, good afternoon. <laughs> uh, my name is Aaron Hinojosa or Dr. Aaron Hinojosa. There we go. Exactly. Um, new, new. Yeah. So I am the Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And um, yeah, this is good. This is good. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about uh, the SCRD. I'm yeah, so glad. So. This is this is a, a strong resource on campus. So I'm excited yeah. to hear, uh, get a little bit more insight about it. So kind of yeah. starting off with just some rapid fire questions, getting to know the office. Does your office provide snacks? <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. We we a lot um of a lot of snacks. Um so what type of snacks? Your, Everything from snack salty and savory. <laughs> uh depends on where we are. What you know, we might have some ice cream oh, in there boy. kind of around in that fall semester. Uh but chips and um uh, healthy things as far as granola bars, but we have chocolate cupcakes. (laughs) And then we do um, randomly have like full on food in here. You know, we have bread and peanut butter and jelly for sandwiches. I did not know that. Yeah, we have that. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, we have water, filtered water, you know, so it's a good a good location between living areas, the dorms, and yeah. walking through East Campus is a nice stop. Beautiful, so. beautiful. Uh, if you could describe the SCRD in three words, what three words would those be? It can be three words between the two of you if you have, if you both have three words in mind. And just open it up there. Yeah. I would say seen, valued, and heard. Aw. And mm. it'd be a place where students can come in and be their authentic selves to express who they are and with no judgment. Um, a place where they can find a sense of belonging, a place where they can just really come in and feel supported. So I would say feel seen and heard. Heard. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I was like, yeah. Those good words. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And what you got for me? Yeah, no, that was really good. That was, that was that solid. That was really Those good. Were meaty. You know, I think we're um, resourceful, mm. um, welcoming, mm. and um, relaxing. I think it's a good place to just sit and not need to do anything. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Just kind of describing the space as well for listeners. Like there's great couches, like there's a lot of like energy and like light with colors in the office. So that also really helps. Yeah. Uh, so relaxing is definitely true. Yeah. Student painting. Oh, there, there <laughs> are student paintings in here. That is, yeah. that is, Cultural. that is a nice representation. These are, yeah, these are, these are all, these are all student, um, 
Yeah, student pieces of work. Yeah. And this one, this is. A oh, these are these two. This picture of um, the Negro League. So some of the famous uh, players from the from the Negro yeah. League um, from our former executive director, uh, Dr. Edgar Barron. He left us that as well as the picture there of the Buffalo Soldiers, um, one of the first uh, black regimen. Uh, yeah. military regiment. So yeah, so those are really good mm -hmm. kind of pictures as well and some ethnic org um, paintings and so on. So kind of talking about ethnic orgs, yeah. maybe transitioning a little bit into what are the practical resources that the SCRD houses? You know, you mentioned ethnic orgs, stuff like that, programming. Let's get into a little bit more of the tangible stuff that the SCRD houses or just utilizes. Yeah. Um, and feel, feel free to jump wherever you want to, Matonia. Mm -hmm. I mean, the res resources, obviously, well, that we talked about yeah. ethnic orgs, we have. So ethnic orgs on our campus, currently we have four that are fully functioning. Our Black Student Association, our mm -hmm. Latino Student Association, Capamilia, which is our uh, Filipino, and then Pacific Islander, our PIO. Those mm -hmm. are the four that are yeah. fully up and running right now. But okay. we do have others that uh, mm -hmm. are looking for some leadership mm -hmm. um, on campus, which are Armenian Student Association, our Middle Eastern, uh, Indigenous Circle, our Asian Pacific American, mm -hmm. which is a PASO. Uh, so those are the groups that are um, looking for some leadership. We have students that actually, you know, fall into that uh, population and identification. Yeah. They just, we haven't figured that out yet. So, but we provide leadership there. Um, you want to look at your, you're looking at some resources. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, we have they have great we, flyers and handouts here yeah. as well, which is also really, really yeah. spectacular. Yes, too. and we also house, uh, for our resources, our Gen 1 Scholars Program. Mm -hmm. The Gen 1 Scholars Program off um, at APU serves first-generation college students with resources and opportunities for academic, professional, and personal growth. So that's really neat. I think that's really um, some students may not know that we house that and we want to provide more outreach and more um, opportunities for students to know that we have this resource in SCRD. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and kind of thinking about the dynamic that the SCRD plays on campus, what would you say is one of the, the biggest places that the SCRD has just kind of either in student life or kind of just department wise? What kind of role does the SCRD play there? Yeah. So I think so you being a male scholar, yeah. which is a multi-ethnic leadership scholarship, which is a merit-based scholarship mm -hmm. and participatory scholarship, I think mm -hmm. our male scholars probably play our largest mm. um identifying piece of our office because you are everywhere on campus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You're representing not only the honors college, but your living area and different things that you're part of theater, yeah, right? And yeah. so I think it's our students um, that partake in our MEL program um, are probably our, I would say if there's a jewel to what we do, yeah. if there's a, uh, something that we want to give biggest focuses, it would be our MEL scholars because you are, living actively on campus and affecting change through those things. So, um, and that's looked different over time. For sure. Um, and, you know, each student brings a different perspective to that program. But I think that isn't something that Matoni over now will oversee yeah. for that. And so that's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that if, if we could land, hang, hang our hat mm. on something, it would be that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. And I guess thinking about the way APU has been changing historically, you know, like different shifts. We have different acronyms going on yeah. for different departments, departments condensing, departments expanding or just kind of absorbing. The SCRD has felt, at least in my student experience, something that's been very consistent. So could you provide a little bit of the context, Aaron, specifically um, around the SCRD? Like what was the heart, the message? Like what is something like what was the reason, I guess, that yeah. it was formed in the first place? Yeah. So um, the office is about 26 or 27 years old. Mm -hmm. So not very old, mm. but um, so about 94, 95 students, students of color on our campus as they were growing as far as population, were noticing there was no resource for them. There was no office for them. There mm -hmm. were no student groups that represented their identity. They went to student life at the time and said, hey, we'd like to see something like this. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, Willie Hamlet, who was a VP at the time of student uh, life, um, he really advocated to get a space. So it ended up being just a small little office yeah. that started what was at the time called MESA, Multi-Ethnic Student Alliance. Mm -hmm. From that became... Quick and, pause, just yeah. for like like yeah. English purposes as yeah. well. Like Mesa, the acronym, but also like like Mesa, you know, yeah. like thinking Ta about like table. table. Yeah. Exactly. So I thought yeah. that, that's just Which I don't think he would have thought of, but, <laughs> but, but I'm glad you did because that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a table. It's like who's around the table? What does a table mean? What is that? What is that? Um, infer when we sit yeah. with one another and yeah, and fellowship and what that looks like. So 
out of that came then the multi-ethnic program office or MEP. Mm -hmm. So a lot of alum at this point would know the SCRD prior to 2012 as MEP. Mm -hmm. So they might say, well, where's the MEP? What is the MEP? Well, the MEP is now the SCRD. And the reason why that changed was we were seeing that multi-ethnic programs, the name itself, right? Because words and acronyms matter. Yeah. Students would walk, I would say specifically our white students on campus mm-hmm. would see the ethnic part of that mm-hmm. and not feeling they that whiteness or white was mm-hmm. ethnic wouldn't come into the office. Um, and I would sit where my office is and see people and I'd see them grab the door and like, oh, this isn't for, for me. And I'd go out yeah. and ask them. And they said, well, I'm not ethnic. I'm like, but you are, Mm. but let's talk about that. Right. So when we realized we were probably keeping more people out of our office than we were inviting by the name. So Mm. we were myself and Dr. Edgar Barron were in New York for a conference and we were talking about this and we're like, how do we get more people invited? So student Mm -hmm. center actually makes us a, a resource, right? We're the student center, right? And then Student Center for Reconciliation, right? So if we're talking biblical reconciliation between yeah. God and man, like that's the purpose, mm-hmm. right? And then, so the um, Student Center for Reconciliation and Diversity. So it was an idea that we weren't just a programming office, but we were a place of resource, a place that was going to be um, advocacy along different lines and yeah. so on. So that's where the context of the office comes. But from that, really, like everything in higher ed, is driven by students that see something that is not, what they were hoping for or they were expecting more of because right. student voice is so important. If you look at the history of of advocacy on college campuses, it is students that are mm-hmm. making those changes. And so um, I give all that credit to, to students looking and needing change. So, yeah. yeah. That's actually a beautiful segue into where I wanted to go to next, because one of the things that I've been learning just putting this project together and the reason that I wanted to kind of get more voices about the resources and places that students can go to uh, to get support is that specifically as my experience as an unhealthy perfectionist in the honors college who feels the need to like do everything myself and like kind of go for it and just like make sure that everything's accomplished and like very individual like you know like I can I can pull myself up uh having a place like the SCRD has been really helpful to kind of know that it it is that opening like the three Mm -hmm. words that you mentioned at the beginning you know like that belonging component so going into the heart a little bit more what is something that you would want students to know um about like their individual experience and what they can gain from like coming into the office, you know, participating in these spaces. Uh, I'll toss it to Matoni first, then we can go to Aaron as well. Mm -hmm. Because I also know that you're new to your role, like you're kind of really just getting the fresh experience at APU as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So kind of drawing on that, what's something that you would want to just highlight about how students can utilize this space for whatever? Yeah, that's a great question. I think students can really, I really, I, what I envision as mm-hmm. having, you know, definitely more fuller staff. Of mm-hmm. course, that might be across the board with APU, but I really want students to come in and and see that they can have the resources available for them, um, whether that be first gen- their first generation students that need to be connected to um, just resources. Like, mm-hmm. so one of the things that we we do, we have mosaic caucus meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have ethnic org leaders sit in the room, and we we hope to just give them tips on how they can strategize and just develop as they're in their in their ethnic org and yeah. having the support that they need. So I really want students to come in and say, hey, I want some tips. I want some ways and how I can make my club better or how I how can I get some resources on campus or mm-hmm. where do I go for um, my mental health? I want to support them. I want them to make sure that they are feeling seen and valued and heard, you know, and mm-hmm. so some of the ways that I do that is just trying to just be there for students. And I want them to come in and really just just hang out, you know, just yeah. hang out, like just come yeah. in, get, eat some snacks, like just be <laughs> yourself. Yeah. So. Absolutely. What would you add to? Yeah, no, I think that's really good. I think um, I want students specifically because this office was done, designed in, in, in at the core of the why to support our students of color on mm-hmm, campus, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. you can look at that in different ways. That term has changed, right? Yeah. From BIPOC <laughs> to POCs to m- the minoritized mm-hmm. students, right? So um, I want students to come in here and not have to be something other than who they've been created to Mm -hmm. be, right? I want them to come in here and not have to teach anybody anything, not have to Mm. explain their culture, their language, their food. I want them to come in here and just like, this is where where I can just sit and not say anything, or I come in here and I need something and I can either get it here or they can help me find where to resource and get that. So I would hope 
that that is what students would feel. It's really the the heart of the mission of what we look to do mm-hmm. um, every year. Every year, I'm like, how do we make ourselves um, better from the the standpoint of people knowing what we do and who we are? Mm-hmm. Um, because I think what what is my biggest um, for my own personal perfection of wanting to be the best that we can be is that a student will go through all four years and have never known who we are or yeah. what we do, and that happens, mm-hmm. you know. And I and I know and it, both for students of color and for our our white students mm-hmm. on campus, some students of color are like you know I don't need that. I mm-hmm. feel like. I'm good. Yeah. And that's okay. But then for the students that do and just didn't know we existed or for the for a white student who might struggle mm-hmm. in trying to be more competent in the conversation around equity and justice, um, that they don't know we're here. And, yeah. they, and they, they unfortunately struggle, you know, of like, what does this mean? And then they get caught up in the polarizing discussion that exists around around that. So we're here to help that. Um, we're here to teach. We're here to support. And I would just hope that that is what students get and faculty and staff, but our focus is primarily to, to reach the student. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I love that last bit there. That was, that was something I think I also needed to hear as someone a part of the office. (laughs) Um, so then kind of bringing us to a close here, Mm -hmm. it can be just a blurb. It can be a word. It can be a sentence, whatever it looks like to you. If there's going to be a piece of advice or even just one thing that you're wanting people to know, kind of in line with what you guys just said, uh, a little bit more targeted, Mm -hmm. what would something, a piece of advice that you'd want the student body, the student, a particular student um, experience to know about your office and how they can, they can best support themselves using Mm -hmm. the resources that are available to them. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I, I would like students to know, not just what our office provides resource, but that they provide resource. So students, students themselves bring knowledge that sometimes is not tapped into because um, faculty or staff um, normalize what mm. knowledge looks like, and it needs to be decolonized in the sense mm. of, you know, a person of color's experience and truth and all of those things. That is knowledge that can can teach a classroom. It can teach in this space mm. without even having to really say much Mm -hmm. someone can just be and someone can be like you know what i'm i'm understanding where you're coming from and they don't have to do a lot so i want students to feel like they're what they bring they have knowledge and they can do that here um and we can just like eat we don't have to do anything (laughs) we can just eat listen to music hang out you know i think that's you know at the end of the day i think what you get outside of a classroom adds so much to your educational experience that kind of takes you further in life than some of your classroom experience, yeah. you know? I mean, mm-hmm. and I'll leave it there. I was like, I I'll leave, I'll leave, keep, keep, keep going for that, but yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, I, I, yeah. absolutely. So. Come in, come into the office and talk to Aaron more about that if you want to keep hearing. <laughs> What's anything like yes. that? Yes, oh, Aaron said it all, all the great things. I'm just like, wow, I can just listen to him all day. Um, I really, I, wanted, I want students to know that if they come in, they have a sense of belonging. Mm. If they, I want them to know that we really want to support them and in any capacity that what that looks like. And if they're not feeling supported in the larger community, then they are welcome to come to SCRD. Mm -hmm. And that's, what I have as my takeaway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I appreciate you. you both and your wisdom. Uh, students, they're located in a very accessible spot right across from the coffee and tea, right in the middle of Coog Walk. So anytime you're on <laughs> campus, it. go ahead and give them a little visit. Yeah. Yes, thank All you guys right. for your time. All thank right. you. Thank you. What a great conversation. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful we were able to sit down with the SCRD and just hear about the awesome community that they create on campus and that they just spread such an environment of welcoming people and really encouraging taking care of your well-being. Yeah. And I mean, selfishly, like Aaron mentioned at the top, I am a part of the multi-ethnic leadership program that they have running out there. Um, the Mel Scholars, like it's been such a blessing. It's been one of like the best factors that I've been able to participate in here at school. Uh, they're so welcoming. I mean, they're, they're, they're my people. So this was, this was a selfish endeavor to be able to talk to them as long as we did. They're just beautiful people, beautiful chants. And I can uh, test the food that they bring into that office. <laughs> office is top notch so if you're ever looking for food definitely stop by there um, but yeah thank you so much for taking an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars we'll see you next time on inside the honors college